hospital in Los Angeles, Paul Cromwell stepped out of the elevator into the quiet, clinical, white-tiled corridor. He was on his way to see Lisa Fenner for his daily visit. Lisa Fenner, to whom the words of Dr. Gordon were still very vivid. I can't believe that you would willingly give up your child for adoption. No matter how ideal the arrangement or how difficult your own situation. If you really understood how much is at stake. As I said, I've seen a great deal of suffering in my time. And so much of it might have been avoided. The wise, tender guidance of a loving mother is a boy's most precious possession. Nothing can take its place. I hope you'll think that over, Mrs. Fenner. Paul's visit, which was so important each day to Lisa. She looked forward to it so eagerly. But it was a visit which Paul faced with mixed feelings of pity, reluctance, and guilt, combined with a certain masculine fear of possible scenes. Lisa's baby had been born almost a week ago, Paul was thinking. Now, perhaps quite soon, this whole ticklish matter might be disposed of to his own and Kit Mead's satisfaction. Of course, he did hope Lisa wouldn't be hurt too much in the process. As he started down the corridor toward Lisa's room, Paul encountered Dr. Gordon. Good afternoon, Mr. Cromwell. Oh, hello, Dr. Gordon. I was just on my way to... Yes, Mrs. Fenner's expecting you. I'm glad I ran into you, Doctor. I'd intended stopping by your office on the way out. Doctor, is it all right if I come for Mrs. Fenner perhaps the day after tomorrow? Yes. I just told her she might go home this weekend. Uh, by the way, Mr. Cromwell, have you made any arrangements regarding Mrs. Fenner's child? I've made an effort to find a nurse for you, but there's still quite a shortage of trained personnel, you know. Malibu is so isolated, it's been rather difficult so far. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, I think it won't be necessary to get a nurse, Doctor. I've talked to Mrs. Kingsley, the housekeeper. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember her. When Mrs. Mead had her trouble. She's quite competent, don't you think, Doctor? Yes, she seemed to be. She was very helpful at that time, carried out all my instructions. Then would it be satisfactory if she were to look after the child? My plan is... I believe, that... Mr. Cromwell, that it won't be too long before Mrs. Fenner will be taking care of the baby herself. Oh? Really? Yes. I spoke to Mrs. Fenner this morning. I asked her if she wished me to have a representative from one of the child welfare agencies come by in regard to the adoption of the child. She said not. That seems quite significant to me. Uh oh. And we had quite a little talk. You know, I believe, Mr. Cromwell, that between the two of us, we've accomplished some change in Mrs. Fenner's attitude with regard to her baby. Of course, she still refused to see it, but. I think her feelings would change when she's away from the hospital atmosphere, when she's in the more personal environment of familiar surroundings. I doubt that she'll be able to resist seeing her child then. Well, I... I only hope you're right, Doctor. Yes, indeed. I've been quite concerned in Mrs. Fenner's case. Well, I won't detain you, Mr. Cromwell. I know you're anxious to see your young friend. Oh, yes. Yes, quite. Uh, however, if you'll forgive me, I... I have one suggestion. But of course, Doctor. I have the utmost respect for your judgment. Thank you. I believe Mrs. Fenner is in a very receptive frame of mind at present. I feel sure that if she isn't pressed too much, if we just let her think the thing through by herself, she will decide to keep her child. I see. And so I'd suggest that you don't discuss the aspect of her plans with her, Mr. Cromwell. Uh, just let the natural feelings assert themselves. Well, thank you very much, Doctor. I... I'll certainly take that advice. Good, good. I'll probably be talking to you later then, Mr. Cromwell. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come in. Hello. Hello, Lisa, dear. Paul, I was beginning to think you weren't coming. You look refreshed, darling. Did you sleep well last night? Oh, yes. I, I'm feeling quite well. How is everything with you, Paul? I feel as if I'd been here for ages... What's going on in the world? Well, let's see. Oh, nothing much, really. Oh, Mrs. Kingsley and Max both sent their best regards to you. Oh, that was nice of them. And I just saw Dr. Gordon. He says I can bring you home this weekend. I, uh, I thought I'd take you back to my house. Oh, that was thoughtful of you, Paul. I do want to be in your house away from the other one. 
It seems so right somehow to be coming home to you. Lisa, I... I hate to burden you with problems of any sort just now, but we do have to make some plans. The child, you know. We have to decide... Yes. Yes, of course, Paul. I, I've been thinking about that. I spoke to Mrs. Kingsley. Asked her to devote her full time to the other house and to the baby. You... You mean the child will be taken there? The two kids out? That was... Well, it seemed the best plan. Yes, I... I suppose it is. Well, I suppose Kit will still be there. Yes. Yes, of course. She'll be in the house with Mrs. Kingsley and the baby. Doesn't that seem sensible? Or would you want to... Oh, no. You handle it, Paul. I... I don't seem to be able to think very straight. Everything's so muddled in my head. Lisa, when... When I talk to Dr. Gordon... I seem to gather from him that... that you may have changed your mind. I, I, I mean, about the baby. Oh, I don't know, Paul. When I talk to Dr. Gordon, everything appears different. He makes me feel so guilty, so weak and irresponsible, almost. All the thoughts I've had, everything that seemed, well, sensible, begins to look just the opposite. Please, Lisa. And don't upset yourself. Everything's... Oh, but when I talk to you, Paul, it's all different. It seems so right, so logical. Well, then, Lisa, you mustn't worry too much about what Dr. Gordon says. After all, he doesn't know the whole story. Yes, I know. But why does the baby have to be in that house? Why can't Kit go on back? I said I'd give the child up. Isn't that enough? Well, you see, it isn't quite so simple as that. For one thing, there are, there are certain complications... The baby's too young to travel. And besides, there are legal aspects. Papers you must sign. Yes, I suppose there would be. Nothing's ever clean-cut, simple. Of course, Lisa, you must know about these things, about adoptions. You can't just... Oh, no, no, Paul, I don't want to know anything about it. I don't know and I don't want Hasn't to. Hasn't Dr. Gordon talked to you? Explain? Only that he said somebody from an agency came to see me. Of, of course, he, I told him no. I couldn't tell him that it isn't like that. This baby wasn't going to just anyone. Well, Lisa, then I suppose we'd just better follow the plan as I arranged it. Mrs. Kingsley will take care of the baby all right. She tells me she's had experience. I'm sure she'll be very competent. Yes, I'm sure Mrs. Kingsley would. And you'll come back to my house to come to less. Get your strength back. Yes, Paul, whatever you say. In the long run, I'm sure this plan's the best one for everyone. Aren't you? What's the matter, Lisa? Paul. Tell me you're sure this isn't a mistake. Oh, Lisa. It was so clear in my mind, but ever since I talked to Dr. Gordon, he makes me think about the baby. And then I get all mixed up again, confused. Well, Lisa, dear, we, we've been through all this before, many times. You made your decision quite independently on the basis of everything that's happened and everything which will happen. I know. Of course, it's the only thing to do for the baby's sake. And then because of what you told me, but... But the main thing is I want the baby to have a good home, security. All the things I couldn't give it alone. Of course, Lisa. If only I could forget all the things Dr. Gordon told me. If only I was sure he's wrong. Sure he misunderstands because he doesn't know all the, the complications. The reason I decided to give my baby away for adoption. But you see, the doctor doesn't know those things. You have to believe in your own decision and not try to look back. Yes, Paul. That's what I must do. Not look back. And that's why I want you to take care of everything. You know all about those legal things, the papers. You must do whatever you think is best. Because I, I don't know anything, anything at all about that part of it. It's too painful. I don't want to know about it. I don't have to, do I? No, Lisa, you don't. I'll handle everything. Paul Cromwell should have said he and Kit would handle it. In a little while, Paul said goodbye to Lisa. As he drove back to Malibu, he felt a return of confidence as he recalled Lisa's last words. Stored them away carefully in his mind. The lawyer had said adoption couldn't be taken care of in this state. Not as they'd planned. But if Lisa was so innocent of the knowledge of the legal ramifications... 
If she didn't even want to know about it, perhaps something could be worked out. Yes, that might simplify everything. Everything. 